what you should expect to find from training from the sensory project is food for thought. Um, so generally you'll have a little video to watch, just like this one, but about 10 minutes long. And it will be me or somebody else talking, little talking head, and we will be giving you information or ideas or asking you questions to get you thinking about a particular topic. What you should not expect to find, you might, is um, answers, step by step, how to do it this way, direct instructional sort of things. There are times when those things come up, but the reason that I avoid them, or even when I do give them, I say, here's the way to do it, you don't have to do it that way, you might not think that way is right, and that's fine, is because those things are, they seem very useful. Like, it's what you want, is to be told how to do it. This is the way to do it. This is right. That is wrong. But actually, they're like stopped clocks. They work once or twice for, for a couple of people. Whereas if I can get you asking questions, if I can give you information that makes you wonder, if I can give you new questions, those questions are like tools in a toolbox and you can take those questions and apply them to different situations, to different people and come up with different answers. So in the long term, having good questions is probably more useful to you than having answers. And so the training from the sensory projects is aimed at generating that reflective practice, getting you thinking, getting you wondering and asking those questions so that you can tailor your, what you do to best support your context and the people that you support and to do what's right for you, not what I say you should do.